My brother said, nope, stands for not of planet Earth. Uh, yes. <laughs> I said, are you sure it doesn't stand for no one particularly enjoyed? <laughs> I wish it was more universally panned because then that joke would be funnier. Yeah. Uh, but I thought it was clever on the fly. I thought of it yeah. instantly. Good. Good from the hip. I even yeah. said, you, you thought of that yourself? Question mark? Oh, did I? Oh, I did tell you. Okay, it was a text. Yes. Got it. All right. Welcome to Namely 90s, the podcast that takes you back to the time before smartphones, Google, and Y2K. Join your hosts as they relive the pop culture that shaped a generation and the parts that many people wish they could forget. Listen in to the conversation about how the decade defined those who spent their childhood there and how it shaped them as adults. So, turn down the grunge and dial up the internet. Let's get started. It's time for Namely 90s. That's right, you're listening to Namely 90s. My name's Andrew, and over there's Brandon. That's me. You can find us online at Namely90s.com or on Twitter and Instagram at Namely 90s with the 90s. You can also find the show on YouTube at youtube.com slash at Namely 90s. And if you'd like to support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash namely 90s, also with a 90s, and get signed up for one of our support levels. One day we can actually start creating content for that. Yeah, you know, maybe uh, maybe we uh, already have and you just haven't checked it out. Uh-huh. But we haven't, so. No. <laughs> uh, uh, welcome, ba- uh, welcome back, everybody. We're here. Yes, welcome to another it's- episode. It's been this, a week. <laughs> yeah. The second to last of our current format. Yeah. Current season. Our, our two and a half year season. I'm getting excited for the new, the new, uh, the new thing. Yeah. I was uh, shocked that you, you asked for the outline so you could work on it. And, yeah. Crazy. Uh, right. It's, it's scary giving up creative control of something that I've worked <laughs> on for two and a half years. Well, but to be I'm, fair, I'm just taking your game and just doing it the same way. <laughs> Yes, but you also have to prepare for the the other part of the episode too. Yeah, but it's at this point it's so open that it's like there's really not a certain expectation, you know. That's true. That's true. Um, but yeah, uh, those are some teases for season yeah. two of Navy Nineties coming January second, twenty twenty three. Uh, but that comes Ooh. after Ooh. our third annual Twelve Days of Christmas specials. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that starts on the twenty first, uh, like it does every year, uh, and originally designed to give me two weeks off from doing uh, these episodes. Uh, while I will actually be giving getting a whole two weeks off, I will not be uh, getting more than a single episode break. Uh, Wouldn't it have just made more sense to just do two regular episodes and just let you take off for two weeks? Yeah. Yeah, I would have. <laughs> That's why I asked, do you want to do the Christmas specials this year? And you were like, yeah, we've been, I mean, it's kind of an annual thing. Well, it, it no, it's yeah. fine. I like no, are we doing it, it like next it. year? That's the real question. Yeah. I mean, uh, this year I definitely crammed it all into. Well, we have been saying annual. Late. So now I feel like. Yes. We've, if well, we've we written a check, it. we can't cash. We, we've got, we've <laughs> yeah. got to do it. Uh, just uh, like last year, I will be um, prepping much earlier than next uh, time. Let's year. start in August. What do yeah, you say? Yeah. This is, so this year, this year, Christmas I, in July. Yeah. This year, I definitely um, went more year one with. Uh, like leading up to Thanksgiving, uh, asking people if they want to be on uh, a little bit earlier, but not as earlier as last year. So um, there's been some scheduling issues, but I, we got it all in half are in the can currently. The other half will be in the can right up to the wire. Yeah, <laughs> um, indeed. Yeah, but we'll figure it out. 
but we yeah. always do indeed and also i've somehow consigned myself to to recording two episodes of someone else's youtube show Ooh. uh in, in this in the last three weeks too so uh i guess I it's was, a good thing i'm not starting my other project till after uh, the first of the year oh yeah i also <laughs> launched a new project uh person a new personal project this week uh or last week um but I'm trying to keep my name out of it. So it's, it's, uh, keep it anonymous. That's fun. That's fun. Yeah. Um, and that's been going well ish. So. It's an ultra right wing blog. That's, <laughs> yes. that's why I don't want to be connected to it. <laughs> No. It's called foxnews.com. No, I'm yes, sorry. I'm now a writer for foxnews.com. <laughs> uh, so if you see any misspellings where it says, uh, fuck Trump, but in a bad way, that's my fault. <laughs> also, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, uh, content warning. We use the T word. Um, but speaking of content, uh, there's a lot of stuff coming out soon. Also, uh, what's her face passed away? Um, Christy Alley. Christy Alley. Rip to the max. Christy Alley. Uh, Lieutenant Savick from Star Trek. Uh, oh, I didn't know she was in that. She was in Star Trek 2, and then she was replaced by some other woman in Star Trek 3. And then Kim Cattrall essentially plays the same character in Star Trek 6, uh, coincidentally enough, but, um, we, uh, I, I only learned like last month that it's a completely different character. Anyway, uh, uh, yeah, we're to Max Christie Alley, the, yeah, I don't know her. Sh- I only, and I'm not saying this to be mean. I literally only know her f- from the Weight Watchers commercials. Oh, I thought you were. Weight Watchers? It's a Weight Watchers. Uh, no, it's but Jenny I don't Craig. know what she's from. No, it's Weight Jenny Craig. Uh, I don't know. But I didn't know what she was from otherwise. Um, well, that's why there's that crass family guy joke that says something to the extent of, uh, I didn't like cheers after Christy Alley ate Shelly Long. Oh. Because she, she replaced her in cheers like halfway through. Um, Christy Alley, you're, it was White Watchers, right? Yeah. All I know is that, and this is going to sound... She just always seemed annoying on when I saw her and stuff, but it's still she, sad that she died. She was definitely a, um, what's the term? Uh, oh no, it was Jenny Craig. Okay. Uh, also I feel like she was, a uh, she advertised for slim fast too. Um, well it was the thing where I was a kid and I was like, who, who is this <laughs> when they were in the commercial? Like, I don't know who the endorsement is. I think I don't know who the actress is in the endorsement, you know? You you actually uh, didn't watch like the the later seasons of Cheers? No, 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 we did not watch Cheers no. as far as I'm aware. At least certainly not when I was around. Because you know it turned into Frasier. Kind yeah, of. yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, Christy Alley was the spokeswoman for Weight Watchers. No, doesn't really matter. I mean, a weight loss company. Oh, she was the spokesperson for Jenny Craig. There it is. W- Rip to the max. Rip to the max. Christy Alley. Um, yes, everyone always oh, dies yeah, she was, on this she, show. She was very, she was very sassy uh, in real life too. All the nineties people are, have died. Well, she was 71. <laughs> I know, but it's just, she's young, but also like people have just got, they get so old so fast. It's been 30 years since the 90s. I know. It's insane. Well, 22 years since the end of the 90s, but still. She was a star in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, Speaking of stars from the 90s, that 90s show trailer came out. Um, I saw it. Yeah, I actually saw it before today. You actually saw it before I did, which was uh, interesting. Um, It, It just popped up in my feed on Facebook or something. Yeah, Facebook, the old person's website. It is. I am the oldest person in the history of the internet. Um, I. It looks okay. I mean, no, okay. All the new characters look god awful. Right. Um, it's kind of fun to have Red and Kitty Foreman back. It's like the the new kids actually like the grandkids. The new kids actually look like children. <laughs> like which 
because like Laura that Prepon, is one thing. They looked like they were in their early thirties already. Like yeah. <laughs> the kids in that show. Well, because they were, uh, like, except for exactly. Mila Kunis, who was like twelve or fourteen when she started, and Aston Kutcher was like twenty six. She um, was twelve or fourteen when she started. Yeah, uh, she oh lied about God. she lied about her age so that she would get the part. Because uh, um, you have to be sixteen to get past uh, child labor laws in acting in California. She was fourteen. She was wow. fourteen. Yeah. So uh, they all look like they're Mila Kunis's age. Uh, yeah. In real life. And then seeing them smoke weed in a basement, I'm like, I don't know how I feel about that. Whereas, like, as a kid watching uh, the teens that were clearly in their 20s doing it didn't didn't really affect me the same way. I've, yeah, it also, like, something about the way TV is shot now, mm-hmm. especially reboots, like, there's something about them that feels <laughs> cheap and, like, low rent, isn't there? Yes, it looks like they filmed with the same production company that did Fuller House. It also depends on like who's producing it, yeah, or making the the. But there's like this awkward. Is it is it too high def now? Is it too? I mean, I guess it just well, it, it's too high def for like the '90s sitcoms, which were like very lo-fi. Yeah, it's like. And how like, do you describe what it looks like now? I can't being even able think. to see into the background. <laughs> Yeah, true. I is think, it? Yeah, it's, it's it's not cinematic at all, or is it no. too cinematic? Well, I I think it's just too high fidelity, like because um, mm. like you know in 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 that seventy show when you watch it in four eighty p, like I you're just, you're walking to like just in the in the the stoner circle, I was like, all you could see is like lines in the background before and like some and the smoke now it's like you see every little small vapor trail and what i'm wondering is like so you know shows from the 2000s right you know uh house or 24 these are shows that i watched a lot of yes there's a way that they're shot and then now i don't know if it's a style like a, a a style shift in in cinematography you're or comparing apples to oranges no i know but it's and even it doesn't matter even these sitcom and i'm sorry even these dramas are shot differently than they used to be 10 years ago are they well, it I looks mean, weird obviously. but is it maybe it's because the, uh, of a transition from film to digital i i don't know or maybe it's so that they can optimize for streaming or for higher for you know 4k and ultra hd and all that other formats and stuff and that has some effect on it. I don't know. It looks bad. I, um, like uh, even I feel like I see a shift even like from early Law and Order SVU or middle SVU to like now mm-hmm. it's like this cheesy modern NBC cinematography and it looks bad. Probably just cost effective at this point. I guess. I don't know. It, it is noticeable though. Okay. Uh, how about we also watched um, last weekend on Saturday Night Live. Um <laughs> They did a Keenan and Kel sketch. Um, yeah, I hadn't seen that. That was pretty funny. That was, yeah. Uh, I saw it on our feed on Monday morning or Sunday morning. Um, and I was like, oh, I need to watch this immediately. Um, yeah, they, they, the guest was Kiki Palmer, and no, uh, uh, she was a child actress. She's currently like, oh, she was in, was she in Nope? I want to say she was in Nope. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and then, um, but obviously she grew up watching Keenan and Cal. <clears throat> right. And, uh, you know, Keenan Thompson is still a cast member. I think he's the longest running SNL cast member now. Um, and they originally Cal Mitchell and Keenan Thompson, the story goes, they both auditioned at the same time for SNL and only one of them got picked. Oh, uh, you may remember they were, they were on all that. The, kids version yes. of SNL. Anyway, uh, they did uh, Kiki Palmer suggested to Keenan that they do a dramatic reboot of uh, Keenan and Kel called Keenan and Kelly. Uh, it's a good bit. Go, It's on YouTube. You can track it down. But Kel, Kel Mitchell comes back and plays Kel and then gets shot and dies like you do in all gritty reboots of uh, 90s kids TV Such shows. Such as Bel Air. Yes. Uh, or, or 
like nine or Saved by the Bell, which is in its second season. And we've yet to watch it. It's on Peacock. Save, saved by the Beller. No. Yes. Saved by the Beller. Should we get into it? It's been... Yeah, let's do it. Um, all right. Here we are. November, November of December of what am I saying? With the N and namely like transposed to the D in December. Like, that would be December. 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 Okay, sorry. Why don't you tell us what was going on back in December of 1991? Channel back with new listeners, as you will, while Andrew has a stroke to December of 1991. On the first, Britney Spears appears on Star Search. Star Search is. Do you remember Star Search? Yeah, it was kind of like the original talent uh, slash American Idol show. Yeah. Uh, she appears on Star Search before she gets scouted for. So Mickey Mouse Club. Uh, also on the first, Sega releases the Mega CD or Sega CD in North America. Uh, in Japan. I don't know if you followed me on that one. On the fourth, Pan American World Airways ceases operations. Pan Am, which is the airline that uh, got Kevin McAllister to fly to New York instead of uh, Paris with his parents. Yeah, didn't they, um, did they merge or just go away? Uh, I read Ceases Operations. They probably got absorbed into something else, but that was like one of the original airlines, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it was, definitely. Um, I just want to see. And National while Andrew airlines, does some actual research. Fleet restructuring. Bankruptcy. I declare bankruptcy. <laughs> I love that. From the, <laughs> from the office. office. Yeah. No, it, it's it ceases operation. It ceased operations. Okay, usually they get merged. Yes. Uh, on the 17th, NBA's most lopsided game in history occurs where the Miami Heat lose the Cleveland Cavaliers 148 to 80. Oh, oh. Uh, Ouch. But if I remember correctly, this is before the introduction of the 25 second shot clock uh, that we talked about in a previous episode. Also on the 17th, the Penguins score a record eight goals in one period against the Sharks, which it's the Sharks expansion year, 1991, to win 10-2 to over the Pittsburgh Penguins, win 10-2 to over the San, San Jose Sharks. Dang. On the 18th, DeForest Kelly gets a star on the Hollywood Walk of, Hollywood Walk of Fame. That's there it is. Dr. McCoy from Star Trek and also like all the TV Westerns he was in um, on the 19th. Boris Yeltsin takes control of the Kremlin Kremlins and- too, the new batch. <laughs> okay. Well, so there's, there's an enemy in Donkey Kong country. The, the lizard people are called Kremlins. I don't know if that was like intentional hmm. uh, or related at all on the, also on the 19th. Kenyon Lonsdale is born. Uh, he plays Wally West on The Flash and Legends of Tomorrow. Okay. Um, I think he was the one that left because he got outed and then uh, didn't know how to handle being gay in public or something. Uh, th- that sounds a little <laughs> reductive, but that's kind of what happened. Um, he's made some guest appearances on the 20th any show because he was supposed to like star on Legends of Tomorrow and then he was just like he was there for a season he's like nope bye <laughs> on the 20th the NHL grants membership to the Senators and the Lightning I assume you know which cities those are Ottawa Senators Tampa Bay Lightning there we go and on the fir- 21st Ted Turner and Bridget Fonda get married they just got engaged last week jeez wow wow that's amazing on the 22nd <laughs> the baby is born I think they're an American rapper <laughs> didn't you see the episode you had to have seen the episode of SNL where he was the host yeah I've had to have because I watched it yeah exactly it wasn't too long ago it was like in the last couple of years Horrible. Who is that? Why? Please don't move on. <laughs> on the 24th, Louis Tomlinson was born and he is a One Direction member. Yeah. I think also, he is. question mark. Uh, I only know Liam and uh, Niles. Niles? Niles. Niles. Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> 
On the 25th, uh, Gorbachev resigns as president of the USSR. And on the 26th, Eden Scher is born. She plays Sue Heck on The Middle. Uh, I've, I think I've watched an episode of that show once. It's the, it's the mom from Everybody Loves Raymond. And, and the janitor from Scrubs. Yes. Uh, on, also on the 26th, the Soviet Union officially dissolves. It finally happens. Uh, no TV premiering or ending in the box office. December 1991 on the 6th, Star Trek 6, The Undiscovered Country uh, premieres. On the 11th, we have Hook. On the 20th, uh, Father of the Bride, starring Martin Short, Diane Keaton, Kimberly Williams, B.D. Wong, and Kieran Culkin. On the 20th, we have JFK, starring Kevin Costner and Kevin Bacon, Tommy Lee Jones, Laurie Metcalf, Gary Oldman. I've never seen that one. Uh, and on the twenty seventh, on the twenty seventh, we have fried green tomatoes, which is the reason why this dish is considered a southern dish. I just learned that last month. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, it was not considered a southern dish before, and then they shot at a place that made fried green tomatoes, and like, yep, that's the South. Well, isn't that interesting? And in the Billboard charts for December nineteen ninety one. We have for all of December and into January, Black and White by Michael Jackson. And continuing on for the second week of December 1991. At number two, It's So Hard to Say Goodbye to Yesterday by Boys to Men. Number four, When a Man <laughs> Loves a Woman by Michael Bolton. Uh, number 14, OPP by Naughty by Nature. Number 15, Let's Talk About Sex by Salt and Peppa. Number 17, No Son of Mine by Genesis. And number 23, Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. Now let's go to Brandon for the Namely 90s Minute. Welcome back to our mid-episode break, Namely 90s Minute. Every week we look back at a culturally relevant show, movie, or piece of pop culture that probably helps stoke the algorithm. This week, in honor of Avatar The Way of Water's release, we're looking back at the original animated movie people joke Avatar stole from, Fern Gully, The Last Rainforest. Fern Gully, The Last Rainforest is a 1992 animated musical fantasy film starring the voices of Princess Daisy from the live-action Mario Brothers movie as Krista, the older brother from Mac and Me as Zack, the concierge from Home Alone 2 as Hexus, the interviewer from Interview with a Vampire as Pips, and Peter Pan from Hook as Batty Coda. Also, Joe from Nash Bridges, rapper Tone Loke, Sarah Palmer from Twin Peaks, the voice of Bobby Hill, and the voice of the Tick voice random background characters. The story revolves around Krista, who is a fairy that lives in Fern Gully. In the olden times, fairies lived in harmony with humans, but now they believe them to be extinct after they are driven away by a dark spirit named Hexus. Krista is an apprentice to the fairy that imprisoned Hexus in a tree. When a bat, who claims to have been experimented on by humans, appears in the village, Krista tasks herself with investigating the situation and ends up meeting a human named Zack, who she accidentally shrinks to save him from a falling tree. But since she's still an apprentice, she doesn't know how to return him to his normal size, so she takes him back to her village and yada yada yada, catch feelings for each other, whatever. Meanwhile, Hexus is released from his tree prison when Zack's bosses knock it down. Hexus quickly regains his powers as he feeds off of pollution. Hexus sends a harvester to knock down Fergan Gully so Zack, Batty, and the fairies do their best to defend it. Krista's mentor sacrifices herself to give the fairies a chance as Zack manages to stop the machine Hexus possessed. But Hexus possesses the oil the harvester ran on and sets the forest on fire. So Krista sacrifices herself by flying into Hexus who then sprouts tree branches and he becomes trapped inside of a tree once again. Chris is still alive somehow and becomes the new magic fairy leader and restores Zack to his normal size. Zack then goes on to tell his bosses that they need to do better and save the environment. And that's Fern Gully in a namely 90s minute. More or less. And now back to the show. Any Anywhere in particular you would like to go? I, I'm looking at the list and it's, 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 it's not good for me. Was there <laughs> anything sure. from 1991 that you recognize? No, nothing that requires more discussion Fair as far enough. as like the NHL stuff. You but, don't want uh, to talk about uh, the baby more? About who? The baby. De, oh, the baby. The bye-bye. The baby. 
or is uh, Jonathan Louis, Lindale Kirk, Louis Tomlinson, Louis Tomlinson. I I, I got it confused with that that woman actress. Um, what was her name? Lori Lori Tomlinson. Tomlinson. Yes. Um, the baby's first album was called Baby on Baby. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like He's that. He's inspired by R. Kelly, I suppose. Also, Eden Sher, I thought was just um, Ed Sheeran. <laughs> <laughs> Louis Tomlinson is an English singer songwriter. Sorry, I, I just uh, I just caught your last joke, and that was very funny. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, One Direction. Um, who are all the names? Uh, Niels. Uh, oh my gosh, how do Liam. I get? Clearly, Louis or Louis. There it is. Uh, Harry Styles, Niall. Harry Styles. It is Niall Horan, Liam Payne, and Louis Tomlinson. Oh, and then Zayn Malik. Zayn Malik. He sounds like a villain in like a YA novel. He does. He does. He does. Uh, there are a lot of young adult novels at the Goodwill where I was recently at trying to buy back the Jewel <laughs> book. I couldn't find it. Oh, that's too bad. It's I put uh, it right in the trash, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Who would put A Night Without Armor by Jewel in the trash? I don't uh, know if it had the dust cover on it, the dust jacket. Oh, that's even better. Like, you just walk into the store and you're like, what is A Night Without Armor? That sounds interesting. And then you open it up to find it's a book of poems by Jewel. <laughs> Our Lord and Savior Jewel. Oh, look again one more time. Well, it, it's cheap on Amazon. Uh, yeah. Uh, what do you want to talk about this episode? Uh, I figure we should talk about Hook to start. That'll be the hook that <laughs> brings people in. <laughs> uh, uh, Robin Williams. Uh, Dustin Hoffman as how did you not see this as a kid? I watched this so much. Uh, I've seen bits and pieces as with most movies. Um, fair. Uh, it was on TV a lot. I feel like it was on TNT a lot. Uh, so it's 1991 American adventure film directed by Steven Spielberg. You like Spielberg? Uh, so uh, Robin Williams was play or played Peter Banning slash. Peter Pan. Yes. Dustin Hoffman plays Captain Hook. Julia Roberts was Tinkerbell. Uh, Bob Hoskins was Mr. Smee. Um, Bob Hoskins, uh, most notably known now for playing Mario in the Mario Brothers movie. Uh, and uh, Maggie Smith is Granny Wendy. It's it's kind of a so it's kind of a sequel to Peter Pan, uh, or technically the novel Peter and Wendy by. Uh, J.M. Bar, who who remembers who wrote Peter Pan? Uh, but it folks, yeah, it, it focuses on adult Peter Pan who's forgotten about his childhood, and in his due life, um, he's a successful but unimaginative workaholic lawyer uh, with a wife who is actually Wendy's granddaughter. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> didn't he date? Yuck. Well, no, didn't he date Wendy as like uh, in? I do in not know Peter Pan or like they, they, they were the ones that were shipped. Uh, yeah. Um, and then they have two children. So uh, Captain Hook kidnaps the children uh, and he has to return to Neverland to save them. Um, yeah. It's and along this journey, he reclaims his memories of his past and becomes a better person and a better father to his kids. Uh, it was released in December of 1991. John Williams did the score. Uh, it was a commercial success. Yeah. Wow. John Williams, man. Yeah, of course. John Williams. You know, it's funny because there's like, you've got Steven Spielberg and John Williams mm -hmm. and you've got George Tim Burton Lucas. and Danny Elfman. Oh. And you're like, I, no, 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 you're going to say George Lucas and, uh, um, it's like John buying the Williams. store brand of Lucky Charms. You know, it's just it's not good. Uh, yeah, I mean, Danny Elfman has his own style, uh, and there's also 
who's the third one? Or like the, the, I I like Danny Elfman better than um, Michael Gia, Gia Giannacchio or yeah. Giannacchio. Uh, he recently had his debut directorial thing, I think. Giacchino. Giacchino? Okay. No. Uh, anyway. Um, but I always feel like his, his music is like derivative because they're always making him do like Star Trek 09, make it sound like the original Star Trek, but also not. Or yeah, exactly. Like the Speed Racer movie. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. Uh, he has he has a lot to do, and they they don't let him play outside the sandbox. Anyway, uh, I really liked Hook as a kid. Um, Julia Roberts was uh, Tinkerbell, um, and she was feisty as Tinkerbell because, you know, Peter abandoned her for uh, long enough to have to grow into Robin Williams and uh, it, yeah um, as well as the, the Lost Boys their leader was Rufio uh, which is why people chant Rufio Rufio they they did that a lot um, the, the Dustin Hoffman as Hook gives a very nuanced performance and uh like it's 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 a good movie i haven't seen it in two decades so don't quote me on it but i recall it being really good like peter's son is you know classic my dad doesn't have enough time for me uh child and um like he ends up like oh hook will be my dad now uh because that's how hook gets his revenge on peter for yeah but it's, wow. it's a magical movie. I, I don't know how you missed it. Spielberg came to be disappointed with Hook. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I mean, when you look at the cast, it, sh- it should be good and should have done well, but it didn't it, that do that well. Uh, yeah. Uh, Robin Williams is Peter Pan. Good casting. Uh, I think originally Michael Jackson wanted to play uh, Peter. Um, This was before the allegations, I guess. Um, Yeah, 91. So it's, yeah, I think it's worth a watch. I guess also, I mean, this further illustrates the point, as we talked about in the last episode, don't really like fantasy genre. That's probably why I didn't watch it. It's Peter Pan. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's that's a good point. But it's... Uh, I, 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 I feel like it's coming off... Did you not watch like Disney films as a kid? Some. I do remember I watched the live action, part of the live action Peter Pan. This is the live action Peter Pan. No, there was like a live action <laughs> um, musical. You know like how they did The Middle Little Mermaid? They did like a Peter Pan one. Yes, where Peter Pan's played by a woman. An androgynous person, yes. Oh. <laughs> well, Isn't it okay. usually a woman? It appeared to be an androgynous person. I was confused okay. for a while. My <laughs> wife had to tell me because I couldn't figure it out. I was like, is that it? Uh, is that? And sh- I think classically yeah. when they when people perform Peter Pan on stage, it's a uh, it's a woman that usually plays Peter. That's just a point of fact. Well, I guess if you need an adult to play a young a boy, child, yeah, yeah, it's like it's Danny DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> Peter and Rumham just flying around. Uh, let's see. I know you haven't seen Star Trek. Um, Not this one. Right. Yeah. What Star Treks have you seen? Uh, the new ones. Ew. Why? Because they're good ish. Okay, one of the the first one was the third interesting. One's okay. The first one was interesting. How how's that? Oh yeah, you're a J I I always forget you're a JJ Abrams fan. That's that's why. Well to a degree. Uh, I, I think the third one is the best. You know, uh, I feel like I I should probably see the second and third just because I did watch the first one. Um, yeah, it's, uh, wait, you, what, what? (laughs) 
You haven't seen the third one? No, I've only seen the first one in the new, the Chris Pine one, the first one. I saw yeah, that. I mean, there's three of them. I've not seen the other two. Oh, well, you can skip the second one. Okay. Um, Good to know. It's, uh, but this is the sixth of the original. Um, All right. This is Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. Uh, a 1991 American science fiction film directed by Nicholas Meyer, who directed the second film in the franchise, Wrath of Khan. Um, it, so Star Trek V, Shatner, Shatner, I think, wrote and shot it after Leonard Nimoy got to sh- shoot Star Trek IV, which was a, a huge hit. People loved it. Star Trek V. <sighs> he took a Shatner on the series. Pretty much. Uh, he. Uh, oh, this is this one you told me about? Where Spock was horrible. Yeah, Spock's brother. So Star Trek Five. Uh, Spock's half brother shows up, steals the Enterprise, drives it to the center of the galaxy where God lives, and uh, God needs to <laughs> use the Enterprise to get out of. Uh, God the needs center. to use the Enterprise. Yeah. To get uh, to the. Well, the, the classic Shatner line is, what what does God need with a starship? <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah. Uh, the only That's thing I incredible. Like, the only thing I like about that movie is the, the three quarters. <laughs> no, the, that, that's that's Star Trek Into Darkness. No, uh, the the three core characters sing uh, "Row, row, row your boat" <laughs> to bookend the to bookend the movie. <laughs> And that's somehow the best part of the entire that man's movie. brain is a tangled web of lunacy. <laughs> Indeed. But uh, Star Trek six was a kind of a course correction. Sulu gets to captain the, uh, the Excelsior, which was kind of like a joke ship in the last two, the previous two movies, previous three movies. Um, yeah, uh, it was. They were originally going to pre- do a prequel with uh, a young crew of the Enterprise attending Starfleet Academy. Does that sound familiar to to you, Andrew? Sure. That's the plot of the first third, m- the third series. first movie. Yes, yes, the uh, third first movie. Thank you. Which is still technically in this line of series because the Spock from this movie ends up in the one that you saw. Right which you don't remember. And yeah, uh, it's basically, this is kind of like the end of the cold war, which is kind of interesting since it comes out right as the cold war ends, um, more or less. And, uh, yeah. So the Klingons and the, the Federation have been at war and, uh, they hate each other. And, um, Kirk is framed for, uh, killing the Klingon ambassador to the earth or whatever, and uh, gets sent to a penal colony, and then it becomes a prison escape movie for a little while, and then they have to stop the assassination of the Earth's, or, or the Earth Federation uh, leader. Um, Kim Cattrall is in this movie as uh, Tuvix? No. Uh, it's not Savic, but some random Vulcan that turns out to be a traitor and uh the best line from this movie is you have not lived until you've heard (laughs) you've not lived until you've heard shakespeare in the original klinganese yeah (laughs) okay that's said by general chang racist name by the way uh (laughs) because the Because the movie Klingons are made to look like uh, Mongolians, kind of. Yeah. Ooh, that's Mo- problematic. Yes. Uh, and not current. It's the the old. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, but the the Klingons, Klingons in Star Trek had always been the. Uh, um, What's the word I'm looking for? The metaphor, the uh, illusion of the of the Russians, uh, whereas the Federation was the U.S. Anyway, yeah, yeah, that kid. space wall was uh, had to come down at some point. <laughs> well, they had a neutral zone uh, between the Federation and Klingon territories that came down. Anyway, 
Father of the Bride. We talked about. Did, uh, did we talk about this last week? Didn't we bring? We talked about the bad remake of it uh, because with of Anthony Andy Garcia. Yeah. Yes. Andy uh, Garcia, not Anthony Lapaglia. Right, but you just turned them into the same person. I did. Uh, Father of the Bride is a 1991 comedy, romantic comedy film starring Steve Martin, Diane Keaton, Kimberly Williams in her date. Oh, that was her film debut. Uh, George, you know, Martin Short, B.D. Wong, and Kieran Culkin. It's a remake of a 1950 film with the same name. Uh, Martin portrays George Banks, a businessman and owner of an athletic shoe company called Sidekicks. <laughs> who when he finds yeah. out his daughter is getting married panics uh, you know uh kimberly williams is also known well yeah she's a famous actress but she's also yes. married to country superstar brad paisley oh i didn't know that yeah uh her sister uh is ashley williams who played um the first girl that ted like dates in how i met your mother I feel like I know Kimberly Williams from something else originally, and now I have to look and find out what it was. Um, oh, I don't like what they did with IMDb, by the way. Weird. It's they changed it. Fair. Um, she was in According to Jim with your favorite yes. Jim Belushi and Nashville. Yes. She was. She was the. She was in Nashville. I guess it makes sense. She was in Nashville. Yeah. She lives in Nashville. <laughs> Fair. Uh, it's fair. Her sister is Ashley Williams, who you've probably never seen before. No, but I've I don't watched think so. in. Anyway, but yeah, that's uh, a cast. Yeah, that's a cast there, man. Yeah, I remember seeing this on TV as a kid and thinking it was a funny movie because it's Martin Short and uh, Steve Martin. Yeah, Steve Martin's funny. Martin Short. I don't get Martin Short, but I th- I think Martin Short with Steve Martin is a good combo. Martin Short with Kurt Russell is a good combo. Um, Martin Short paired with someone is a good combo. Martin Short left to his own devices on uh, a weird TV show. Uh, not the best. No. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, also, this was written by Nancy Myers. If I remember correctly. <laughs> Should that name mean something to me? Nancy Myers. She she wrote like all the rom coms of the nineties. Okay. Um, let's see. Father of the Bride, Father of the Bride Part Two. What women want? The parent okay, I know trap. That one. Something's got to give. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's more. The what 90s. women want? That's the one where Mel Gibson can hear women's thoughts. Yes. Um. Yeah. She's. She's like the Stephanie Myers. Uh, who She's I like, think God is- forbid if one of the women is thinking about like Hanukkah or something. <laughs> uh, he wasn't established at that point. <laughs> <laughs> True. Well, he was, but uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it was so popular. It spawned a sequel. Uh, where like the baby's coming and uh, um, yet again Martin Short is panicking and Steve Steve Martin, Martin. is comic relief. What? Um, pa, I'm so sorry. I don't have much to say about any of these things. I hate. Th- I'm so glad we're done with the early '90s. <laughs> Me too. Although I feel They're like rough. there was more stuff in these last two episodes than there will be next week. The last one I was able to to actually participate. This one it was just so hard for me. I, I didn't know a lot. Uh, yeah, there wasn't a lot. There was stuff that I liked (laughs) and that was about it. Um, I guess that's it for this week's episode of namely nineties. Remember you can find the new episodes out every Monday. Uh, remember uh, the 12 days of Christmas specials. Third annual is coming up on December 21st. That's a win Thursday, Wednesday, a Wednesdays. It's a Wednesday. It's a, I'm looking at March, 2023. It's a Wednesday. Uh, so yeah, that's next Wednesday. Uh, we'll be having episodes daily with podcast guests talking about episodes of 90s t- holiday themed episodes of and television. Don't, don't forget to join us on January 2nd, Monday, where new. we debut our new format. 
Yes, one of two new formats for the mm-hmm. new season. Uh, find us on Twitter and Instagram at Naming Andy's with 90 S or find our uh, Spotify supplemental playlist. It truly description. My brain is melting. <laughs> Uh, tell us, tell us what you want to talk about. Talk, <laughs> tell, talk tell us what you want to talk about on future episodes. Thank you. If you'd like to support the show, please check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash Navy90s, also with a 90s. Finally, you can also contact us through our website, Navy90s.com. Please can. subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Queen and Ease, Deezer, TuneIn, iHeart, Good Pods, and wherever you get your podcasts from. I'm Brandon. That over there is Andrew, and we will catch you next time. Thank God the early 90s are almost over. Wait.